Hi everybody, I want to do a small video on the subject of assembling bench joinery products. This is under the manufacture of bench joinery products, City and Gills 214. Um, when we come to assemble bench joinery products, we've already talked in the last video about assembling small frames, but we also have other joinery products that need to be assembled too. The first one is um, staircases. Um, now, in the book, it shows two diagrams of a staircase being assembled this way on, with the stairs and the, the treads and the risers going vertical. And that's fine, except that I've never ever assembled a staircase in that way before. I always assemble them horizontal with the treads going down uh, and then the risers coming down as well. Um, for some reason, that is the way that seems most obvious to me. And one of the advantages of doing it in that way is that you can assemble it on a table that's perfectly level and straight, with, that has no twist in it, which means that the staircase itself will always be level and straight. Now, bear in mind that very often when you do it like that, it's impossible to see whether there's little drips of glue that are running down on the um, other side. Of course, that's where we just need to be extra careful that we don't have uh, glue being smothered everywhere. The other thing that's very important, I didn't mention it, I don't think, on the last video, is that when we're assembling frames, what we must do before, just before the frame is assembled, just before it's glued, is that we take each individual piece, put it into the uh, vise, and take one sweep of it on the inside surface. If we don't clean up the inside surfaces of a frame, then it's gonna be impossible to clean it up when it's assembled. Obviously, you can't get a plane in to make that cleaning. So the cleaning up of a frame just prior to gluing is absolutely essential. The same is true, of course, for staircases. And when we're, when we're making a staircase, we have the two strings and we put the treads in, okay? We need to have clamps at the bottom pulling it in and we need to have clamps at the top pulling it in as well. And then of course, having put all the treads in, we then, with, with a small amount of glue on each tread, each end, then what we do is we put the risers in and then what we do is we put all the wedges in. The wedges in for the um, treads first and then the wedges in for the risers second. And then of course the uh, risers then are attached to the back of the treads, um, screwed normally. And also at the same time, we put in the glue blocks on the staircase. These, these are a rub joint. So what we do, plenty of glue on it, put it on as you rub it back and forward. So you'll feel this, a suction effect as the wood is drawn down to the timber. And then what we do then is take our hands away and leave it. We don't want to be moving them too much. We don't want to nail them. The reason why we don't want to nail them is whenever there's a nail going into wood, if there's movement like this, it'll cause a squeak. And that's the thing that we're trying to avoid when we're making staircases. Let me put my glasses on. There may be something I'll need to focus on. Yes. Now, the next thing, of course, is assembling uh, kitchen units. Now, you know, we did talk about two different types of kitchen units. We talked about the kitchen units that are made of frames with panels in them, or we talked about the type of kitchen units where they're a complete sheet and they're attached at the corners with proprietary fixings. Um, that's probably the most common way of assembling a unit today. A lot of units um, uh, are assembled with the use of just dry dowels and biscuits and uh, they may require a mallet or a clamp, uh, but they normally are pulled together by the actual fitment, so there's not, no need for glue. One of the things that also needs to be mentioned when we're assembling furniture or assembling anything really, is we need to check for squareness, okay? Um, the way that's done is by the use of a squaring rod, and we can have different types of squaring rod, but the principle is this, that we measure from one corner to the other corner and we put a very accurate pencil line. Then we turn it around and measure to the other corner. Now, if it's truly square, then those two um, measurements should be exactly the same. It should be exactly the same. Sometimes we use a little pointed stick. 
Sometimes we put a little nail that just locates in the corner. But the main point is that uh, if those two uh, measurements, those two distances are not perfectly correct, then it's then completely not square. Um, when it comes to finished um, assembled bench joinery, finishing of assembled bench joinery products, one of the things that we need to do is, is have quality checks. We need to go around the whole process and just check that we've got the quality that we need. One of the things that happens with um, assembling frames, for example, very often, is that by adjusting some of the, um, uh, the joints, the, the, the actual unit itself can become a two, two or three millimeters smaller than what it ought to be. And this is something to be avoided if we can at all possible. When we take the um, uh, frame out of the glue, out of the, out of the clamps and out of the gluing operation, we'll discover that though the glue is uh, drying, it may not be 100% set. And then whether you realize that when you put, for example, PVA down, it's white, like milk, like a double cream, but then it turns clear, becomes opaque, and then it becomes hard. Now that hardening process can take quite some time. It takes about an hour for the glue to set a little bit, but it'll take longer than that for it to completely cure. So what we tend to do is to do the glue process, uh, put the wedges in and then just leave it until the following day. And that way we know that the glue is definitely set. We can, we can have another way of doing it. We might take a small piece of wood, put some glue on it, and then what we're able to do is to poke around at the wood that's on the, on the rather than poking away at the job itself to discover um, whether the glue has set. Now the next process, which as I said, normally takes place the following day, is what's called smoothing. And for this, we have a special dedicated tool that's only used for this purpose, and that's the smoothing plane. This is the small plane, the one that everybody assumes is the, is the most common plane, plane. But actually, the one that should be the most common is the jack plane. The smoothing plane is for smoothing. Uh, and what we'd need to do with a smoothing plane is totally clean it up, sharpen up that blade so absolutely to a whisper, perfectly perfectly uh, finely set and then we then need to clamp the frame down and we need to smooth over each of the joints in such a way that we end up with a dead flat surface and then we turn the whole thing over and get the other side perfectly flat as well. At this particular point we don't want to be taken off too much. As I said, in the cleaning up process, it's too easy to take off too much material. You end up with something that's two or three millimeters too small. So we don't want to do that if we can help it. All we're doing is taking off just a slither on these, on these joints to just, to just bring them back perfectly in line. That's all we're doing. Um, a lot of people at this stage also heavily sand. You know, they get a sandpaper on and that is absolutely not necessary. If you've smoothed your timber quite well and you have a small block of wood, I just have a small block of wood and you wrap some um, paper around it, say about um, 120 grit and just gently go over the whole thing, then you'll find that it'll be perfectly good enough. What we don't want to be doing at this time is introducing too many scratches onto the wood. Funnily enough, um, sandpaper very often does produce too many scratches. Those scratches can be very unsightly and they can be seen. They can be seen by the customer eventually as they look visually at the wood. They'll see scratches, see circles or see lines. And that's something to be definitely avoided. The ideal finish on a piece of timber is to have it perfectly flat without any scratches. Of course, if we're going to be using varnish or we're going to be using any varnish product, then we really need to be very careful not to put scratches on the wood because every scratch will take, the if it's darker varnish, will take a darker line and you'll end up with something that looks very scratchy all over it. And of course, it goes without saying that while we're working in this way, we need to be especially careful that we don't introduce uh, dust into the process. Um, those of you that need to, um, you need to make sure that um, if the timber is going to be um, painted, then it needs to have primer. It needs to have a couple of coats of 
quite thin primer put on and lightly dusted in between, dusted down with a bit of sandpaper, very lightly, and then uh, and then another coat. You need to have probably at least two coats of primer, sometimes three. You may need to paint the knots, if there are any knots on the wood, with a little bit of what's called knotting. Now this is a type of French polish, which seals in the resin. There's resin in the knots, and that resin is very sticky and it will tend to weep through the paint and be seen on the outside eventually. So we, so we seal those in, making sure that they're nicely covered, and then we prime with a couple of coats at least, and then we then undercoat and then finally we gloss. Just bear in mind as well, as we're talking about the whole of the assembly uh, process, that the workshop at all times, at the beginning, in the middle and at the end, must be kept in a fairly clean state. It's important every two hours to just break off for a minute, not go and have a cigarette or go away and have a break. No, no, just break off for a few minutes and get the broom out, dust everything down and sweep everything clean. There's nothing like working in a tidy workshop. In fact, it's a requirement that we should all work in a tidy workshop. So there we are. This is this video over, not a very long one, as you can see. Next time, we're going to be talking about carrying out first fix flooring and roofing operations, which is unit 207. So we look forward to seeing you then. Okay, have a good day. Bye for now.